Hey everyone, it's your girl Jen, and I cannot believe we are already at the end of the first month of 2020. I don't know about you guys, but January has been just splendid. Unbelievable. It's been a really great month for me, and I think it's because I have been putting a lot of new habits into practice, and it's just been deeply satisfying. So for today's video, I wanted to shout out some of the things that have attributed to my happiness. So let's get started. So let's start cracking on with some beauty tools. This is a makeup sponge by Biddy. My friend Pony gave me two of these while she was here in LA. For years, I've been using the beauty blender and I never thought to like, go like dip my toes anywhere else but this was the month where i was like let's try and blend with some new tools and this sponge from biddy is so unbelievably soft and because of its texture it's able to seamlessly blend all the foundation and the concealer on my face i also use this to bake if i am gonna do like a big shoot and i need my face to be like like completely snatched and matte this is just a great tool that i've been loving so i have yet again another blending tool I've been busy. I've been finding different techniques to blend out my face. This is the Blendiful by Tati Beauty. I swear, like every time Tati like gives me something, I'm just like still so starstruck that like she knows that I exist. It also creates like a beautiful natural finish. I didn't think a finish like that was possible with like something that's made out of cloth, but it really does it. I like that it's very flexible. I'll use one end for my foundation. If I need to blend out my concealer, I'll fold it and then I'll tuck it into that little crevice. And you can also use this to powder too. I just really appreciate things that multitask. I used it in my last Get Ready With Me video where I talk about friendships and toxic relationships. So if you guys haven't seen that video, I'll leave it in the cards. So prior to this month, I didn't really understand the use of bronzer. I just went directly to contour because it's shaped and you know made you look like you had some dimension. But this month I was introduced to Il Maquillage's Paparazzi Bronzer and I finally understand why people use this. I've only been contouring my nose and ditching like doing the the cheekbones like i just i'm skipping it and i'm just going straight to bronzer i'll put it on my cheeks my temples and the tip of the nose and it just creates this like really sun-kissed glowy look like you've been out in the sun all day but without the uv rays and it just makes you look very very healthy which i am obsessed with i know it's january and we're in the middle of winter but there's nothing wrong with just having like a sun-kissed face like that will never go out of season. For my skincare favorite, I have found my favorite day cream to use. It is this one by Darfon. Is their Hydra Skin Light Gel Cream. Now I've been using this day cream for a couple of months now. And as you can see, it's like well loved. I have used it in different environments. Like it was with me in the winter of London and it has been with me in LA. It kept my skin hydrated. It works with all the other skincare items that I use and I love the way it sits under makeup. It definitely has like that gel sorbet texture and it just absorbs really quickly with some other day creams. Like sometimes it just be sitting on there for like 20 minutes. I need my creams to absorb as fast as possible because I am ready to get out the door. Now let's move on to some books. I wanna talk about The Unexpected Joy of Sobriety by Katherine Gray. Now I picked this up because I did dry January. That meant that I did not have a single drop of alcohol in my body for 31 days. Now, if I'm truthful, this is the longest time I've ever been without alcohol since like turning 21. I don't know, it was a big feat for me and I wanted to read material to keep me motivated and also keep me informed as well. So this book really breaks down the damage and the effects that alcohol does on our bodies and our minds and how society pressures us into drinking. Like it's like, it reminded me that alcohol is a drug. It's a psychoactive drug. It is a legalized, glorified drug that is you know applied in so many cultures the author pointed out that alcohol is the only drug where you have to explain why you don't do it because with any other drug when you say like i'm good no one's like why like what's what's going on this book in combination with this month just made me reevaluate how often i want to ingest alcohol because i felt like in the past i i Felt that I truly needed alcohol to help me socialize, uh, to drink to celebrate, to drink to relax. And now that I've proven to myself that I don't need to drink to do all these things, like it's really been 
empowering. Like I'm not going to quit alcohol forever. Like I'm definitely going to have a couple of cocktails now and again, but definitely not the frequency that I, I've been doing in the past. I kind of want to do a video explaining how I feel after being sober for this long. Uh, because I truly have never felt this focused, this creative, this alert in my entire life. And it is so, so refreshing. So you guys already know how much I love Brene Brown. I am like on a soft mission to read all of her books and I'm on track, I must say. This is my third book that I've read by her. This is called Rising Strong. Um, the first one was Gifts of Imperfection. Second one was Daring Greatly, which was on my top books of 2019. And yeah, I finished Rising Strong this month and it couldn't have come at a better time. It kind of hops on the research that she has about vulnerability and shame and just kind of zooms in that moment of what actually happens when you're like, you know, on the floor at the lowest point of your life. It breaks down that part where you're like starting to rise up because I feel like a lot of those stories that involve, you know, rags to riches or the underdog rising up, it's kind of rushed during that part, but this book really examines that part and what it's like to sit in that discomfort. And it really came at a perfect time for me. I made sure to read this book at the end of this month because by the time you're watching this, I will be at a Rising Strong workshop. Like I wanna call it a conference, but it's not a conference because it's not about work, but it. But a workshop has the word work in it. But I'm gonna be at this Rising Strong retreat, I guess, where we're gonna be like implementing the tools that we learned in this book and like trying to apply it in our real life. And I'm just like so excited to see like who will be there, what I'll learn. Uh, it'll be really exciting. So I wanted to make sure that I did like my recommended reading before heading to the retreat. So yeah, I, I'll let you guys know how that is too. I'm planning on vlogging it because it will be a solo trip so this year, one of my focuses was to be more mindful and aware of my own thoughts. And meditation is obviously the best for that, but it's really hard to keep up with the meditation train. However, I have been using this app called Calm that has made meditating so exciting for me. I actually look forward to my meditation practices and Calm is really great because I mean, first of all, I absolutely love Tamara's voice. Like there's something so calming about it. Like I don't think I could get sick of her voice. Like not gonna lie, Headspace was great, but I just got tired of that guy's voice after a while. I was like, ugh, I, there needs to be an option to change this. So each session is only 10 minutes long. Uh, I believe you can go longer. I think that's an option, but I like to keep it 10 minutes because everybody has 10 minutes to spare. No matter how busy you are, there are 10 minutes that you can just lock yourself in a room and just meditate. And I think because it's that period of time, it it allows me to not have any excuses to, to not meditate. And I also love the fact that each session has a lesson. So it will really just kind of set you up for the day and make you feel you know, inspired and a little bit lighter. What has helped me with my meditation streak is I always like to roughly meditate at the same time. I like to do it after I shower, after my workout, and I'll just like literally be on that, like on this bed and I'll meditate and Cheeky will be like by my feet. It's just like a nice time that really feels so wholesome and fulfilling and something that I look forward to. You can also use the app at night as well. There's a bunch of like, uh, guided sessions where she'll like lull you to sleep. Like Matthew McConaughey has like sleepy time stories too. Like I tried to listen to that one, but I'm like, I can't listen to Matthew McConaughey's voice. Like I keep on laughing because it sounds like he's like in the room with you. But if you're into that, that option is there. So the last favorite I have are binoculars. I got this on a La Mer trip. Okay, it's a very bougie binocular set. Like it's a Swarovski La Mer binocular set, but I got this as a gift. And like when I got it, I was like, oh, this these are really nice, but what use would I have them for? Like I just always thought you needed binoculars for like, like I don't know, bird watching or like, I don't know, like spying or something, but I recently took these to a concert. I went to see Rex Orange County. And since I was doing like dry January, I was like, how can I make my concert experience more fun? And I was like, binoculars. Oh, it completely enhanced 
my concert experience. I was able to see everything on stage from like the shoes to like them playing their instruments to the set design. Like I felt like I was on stage. I'm gonna bring these binoculars to every show that I go to, and especially Coachella. Cause you go to Coachella and it's like fun and all, but you can't really see anything. I'm like five foot one, so like, God forbid like a tall person sits in front of me, like I, I'm just screwed. So I always have to be in the back and like listen to the music that way, but I'm always like straining my eyes. Not anymore. These binoculars have completely changed the game for me. I mean, I'm just saying, like if you're a shorty and you love concerts, but you always struggle to see, buy yourself some binoculars. All right, that is a wrap on my January favorites. I have also made a January playlist in my description box, so please click that open. It is essentially a playlist that reminds me that I am constantly evolving, that I'm growing and leveling up. Like hopefully it inspires you guys too. I want this playlist, this monthly playlist thing to happen like every month. So we'll see if I can keep this habit up. But it's like really fun, cause like February will be like all love songs and March will be like, I don't know, I feel it'd be like fitness music, like music that like makes me like get up and jump. And then April is like, you know, sad, like rainy songs. So I have like, I have stuff that's in the mix. I would love to know how your January was. Like, was it good for you? Was it bad? Was it just meh? Let me know in the comments down below. I really love connecting with you guys that way. Call me old fashioned, but there's nothing better than typing out on a keyboard. The phone, keyboard, I'm like, ah. Uh, it's such a first world problem, but there's something about typing on those keys. But anywho, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Mwah.